Today is the final video in our Power Apps Navigation series where we're gonna be talking about seven best practice tips for navigation, as well as showing you several great resources and examples to get you started actually building them. Hi guys, my name is Michael with Bulb Digital and today's video is the final in a two-part series on navigation best practices. Um, please check out the description below for the first video and check it out if you have not yet. This video is a continuation of that. So in the first video, we talked about navigation building blocks or object types, you can think about it that way, using Power App Studio as an example. And so in today's video, we're gonna be taking some of those concepts and talking about best practices, uh, seven in particular, that result from them, as well as great examples of how to actually implement them in your Power Apps. Please be sure to like and subscribe below as well and leave any questions in the comments and we'll get back to you. So tip number one would be use the right tool for the right need. So as you're thinking about where do I put this type of navigation, um, basically just reference everything we just talked about in that first big section and think what is this object designed for? So if you need to navigate to something consistently from any screen in your app, put it in the header. If you need a place to show your screens, put them in the left nav. If you need a place to put settings unique to that page or navigations to that page, put them up here in the sub nav. If you have a little drop down of, of navigations unique to an item, put them in an ellipsis drop down. Like, if you, if you just follow that, that's gonna get you a long ways. Tip number two, which we've kind of talked about a lot, is aim to be really consistent with looks, function, and placement, both within your app and across your apps and from your, your apps to what Microsoft does. Because um, Microsoft, as, we, as we've talked about earlier, does this so beautifully where you can go from one M365 app to another and just intuitively know how to use it because they, they do all these things similarly. And so if you can extend that into your power apps, your users are gonna just love you to death because everything's gonna feel so intuitive. Tip number three is use navigation to strike a good balance between grouping things, showing things, and hiding things. So we want to um, not show our users too much information when they come to a screen because that can be extremely overwhelming. Um, we also don't want to show them too little. Uh, you know, if, if everything was nested and hidden and they had to click this and then this and then this and then this, nobody wants to do that. So you got to strike that perfect balance. And if you think about just kind of the logical grouping of things and just like visually having a, a good happy medium, and if you're not sure what that happy medium is, just come look at, at you know, Power App Studio. They do a great job of it. Um, so that's, I think, all I have to say about that. Tip number four is use screen space where possible with collapsible menus. Um, and, and this is just a way to you know, save yourself some real estate. So you know, is this functionality with the left nav imperative? No. Is it cool looking? Yeah. But more importantly, does it give you more screen space? Yes. And that's, that's pretty cool. And especially, you know, we, I don't know, I always feel like the power apps I make never have enough screen space anyway. So you know, save where you can. Tip number five is to use screen overlays, I don't know if that's the best term, but that's what I call them, rather than new screens, especially when you're only going one level deep into a parent-child relationship. Let me unpack that a little bit. So, and this is actually a great example, the, the page you're on right now. If we're in a table, so let's go into the account table. So columns are a child of um, a table, right? And if we want to edit this column, and this feels intuitive. You click on it, and we get a little overlay, a side overlay, pop out, whatever you want to call it, over here on the right-hand side. And this is so much more handy than navigating to a different screen, right? Like, we're, what we're trying to do is edit some information here. We would never go anywhere else from this um, pop out. We would never need to navigate anywhere else other than back to this screen. And so why go to a different screen, come back to this screen, probably lose your place? There's no need to. Just use a, a, an overlay like that, and it will save, save your users a lot of hassle. Uh, tip number six I think we're on is make sure when you hover over stuff, this is just generally for all of your navigation things, make sure when you hover over stuff, your users can tell it's selectable. And this, it, 
I just can't tell you how much this drives users nuts. You probably know. It drives you nuts when, when you're on, on websites or things and you, you know, you're hovering over things and you're like, is that, is that a clickable thing? And like, crazily enough, if you look through a lot of the Power Apps templates, there's a lot of instances where you hover over a, a, a navigable thing and you, <laughs> you might know it's, it's uh, navigable if you actually click on it, but if not, so make sure there's some visual indicator. And one of the best things is, if you can, get the little cursor to be the pointer, uh, the little finger, because that, that is slick. The very last tip is use Power Apps components as much as you can for things that are gonna be the same throughout your app. So in particular, we're talking about the header and the left nav, I would say. And if you have a waffle menu, probably that as well. So go ahead and turn those into components. You only have to build them once and then you put them on every screen in your app, saves a lot of time. Also, we do have several videos about building components that we will link in the comments below. So be sure to check those out. Okay, the final section of this video is I actually want, now that we've kind of got some you know, foundation with navigation objects and best practices, let's look at how do you actually implement these. And I'm actually just gonna point you to a bunch of resources, so you can go check these out, um, and uh, just to kind of accomplish all these various things. I will say you can't do everything in Power Apps, which hopefully you know, is an obvious statement, but you can go pretty far, um, and it's amazing what some of these people have done. So the first thing I want to show you are some of the Power Apps templates. And if you don't know about these, let me just come back here real quick. When you go to create, <clears throat> you scroll down, these are all templates and they're amazing uh, starting points. So you know, if you haven't checked these out, go ahead and check them out. You just click on it, give it a name, click create, takes you right to uh, the Canvas app editor. So three of these I wanna show you. The first one is called Power Apps Training for Office. And the main reason I wanna show you this is because in my opinion, it has the best uh, left nav menu right over here of any of the templates. And actually when you consider what this looks like compared to the studio uh, left nav, they're very similar. So that's super cool. And if you press play to review this app, um, you know, functionally it, it, it works as you'd expect and it's also collapsible, and it's responsive, so the screen changes as you would expect. So, pretty slick. So if you, uh, with any of these templates, and actually anything I'm gonna show you, the best way to like figure out, how do I do this? Open, up, open it up, and just kind of reverse engineer it. So, you know, click around, click into some of these things, click into the gallery, see what all the properties are doing, and then, you know, you'll be able to figure out how to do it yourself. Um, one more thing I want to point out with this template, which is pretty neat, is the idea of tabs. So over here in this section of the screen, you know, we've got these two tabs to display different text. Really nice way to group that up so it's not too overwhelming at first sight. All right, well, let's move on to another template, the PDF reader. Uh, the main thing I really liked about this is the left menu. It's not really a menu, but this functions very similarly to a menu. Um, instead of just collapsing to narrow, it disappears all the way, which is pretty sweet. So if you need an example of how to accomplish something like that to get the menu completely out of your way, uh, this was the only Power Apps template I could find that did that. So it's pretty cool. And the third and final one I wanna show you is onboarding tasks. And the main reason I believe I wanted to show you this one was this is a good use of uh, an overlay in the middle of the screen. So when you need to, again, the idea of don't send them to another screen if you don't necessarily need to, this is a great way to display something in the middle here while kind of graying out what's around it, but you're, if you, you know, leave it, you're still in the same spot. So if you need an example of how that works, come check out the get onboarding tasks. Also, this is a nice example of tabs across the top too. So pretty sweet. Okay, that's all I wanna show you with templates. Um, if you, Templates are interesting. They're super helpful in terms of, you know, giving you a head start. In terms of like the best looking navigation tools or the best functioning, um, they're not the best, but they definitely give you starting points. What I think are a little bit potentially better quality are things you can find on the Power Apps community uh, galleries. And if you have not been here, these are amazing. So people from the community post uh, samples and 
and apps and components and all kinds of things that are free for you to download and use. And they're amazing. So I searched uh, a bunch of the terms we've talked about. So menu, header, um, breadcrumbs, tabs, and I found lots of resources. I just want to quickly show you. And then all of the links for these, we're going to include below so you can check them out as well. But honestly, if you come here, uh, so powerusers.powerapps.com, and just go to search and search the galleries, you know, any kind of keyword of something you're trying to figure out, chances are you'll find it. All right. First one I want to show you is this guy. If you're looking for, in my opinion, what is the best example for tablet and mobile of a, a hamburger left menu that um, collapses uh, and not, sorry, not collapses, visually completely disappears and uh, is also multi-tiered, so it's nested, this is the one. Uh, this is super cool. This is by Reza Durrani, who's a genius. He does great videos. So this example here is another nice one of a disappearing left nav. Uh, Shane Young is another great, great community guy, and he did this video of this kind of slow uh, widening and then disappearing menu. That's pretty sweet. Uh, this is another nice one, kind of same thing, slowly opening, slowly closing. This is a nice one from the mobile. Uh, so it's disappearing menu, and this also has a really nice uh, back button, which they demonstrate right here. It takes you back a screen, which that's super handy. Um, this next guy, these are just three screenshots, but I thought his menus from the looks of them were like maybe the slickest I've seen in terms of the visuals. So here's his left nav. He's got this left, left nav that's like more settings based, which that just looks gorgeous. And then this top um, kind of navigation little toolbar as well. That looks super nice. Um, this girl figured out how to do breadcrumbs which is cool and actually uh, I think she's the only one I could quickly find on that. And so here's her article kind of demonstrating this. So you click on things, it shows you the breadcrumbs up here and then you can click this back arrow to go back to the parent. So pretty sweet. This guy, this was the coolest. I This is the only one of this kind I've seen. So this is his kind of like header you could say and then this is the sub nav. So as he's clicking on different icons, different things show up here. So that's pretty sweet. Um, Laura Rogers is great. Um, so she made this thing with, with really nice tabbing up near the top and then this kind of header underneath it. So that was kind of a neat design for mobile. I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, this is super nice. <clears throat> I really like, so he's, this is a multi-tab form. So you click, you know, he's opening up this form. But what I really liked about this as well as the multi-tab feature was just how this overlaid. So again, you're not going to a new screen. You're just overlaying on top of this one. It's pretty sweet. And the last thing I will show you is April Dunham, who's also super amazing. So she did this tabbing thing to replace the content uh, from this part of the screen with a video gallery. So pretty cool stuff. So this concludes our second video and our series on Power Apps Navigation. Hopefully you found this very helpful. All the links for the things that I talked about are gonna be in the description below, so please check them out. And just generally like use, you know, peruse Power Apps templates, uh, peruse the, the galleries on the community site. They're a great source of inspiration and, and things that'll just really speed up your development. Um, a couple things that I'd like to uh, bring to your attention really quick, which will also be in the description below. The first one is we just released as a company a new podcast called Make Others Successful. Um, it's just a chance for us to engage in this sort of conversation, but in a longer format. So it's, it's a little more casual, a little more uh, conversational, um, where we're going to talk about all things related to the modern workplace. So um, check that out. And then the second thing I want to bring to your attention is on our website, we just released a learning center where uh, we have kind of organized and categorized all of our blogs and videos and articles and things. Um, so you can like sort them by like the type of Microsoft app, like SharePoint or Teams or Power Apps, or by the concept you're interested in. So, um, you know, intranets or business apps or collaboration, things like that. So go ahead and check that out for all those great resources. And I think that's it for our navigation series. So we'll see you in the next one.